Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be bringing you my full thoughts on Iron Flame. This is my entire experience reading it, what I thought. I try very, very, very hard not to give spoilers in this video. There may be moments of my reactions where you can tell that there's something that's going to happen around a certain time frame. Hopefully I did a pretty good job with that, but I just wanted to give you guys a nicer introduction because I decided to do this on a whim. I was sitting at work and I was like, okay, your copy comes tomorrow and you're going to be able to read it and it's going to be great. And then my timeline went off and my discord started popping off and everyone was getting their book and they were reading it and they were loving it and they were talking about it. And I got FOMO I jumped in my car, sped to Barnes and Noble, got one of the copies and took it home with me and immediately started reading it when I got home from work. So it was kind of a spur of the moment decision to go get the book. And that's why you don't get a pretty unboxing video because I couldn't wait that long. My copy did get here when it said it was going to on Wednesday, but I could not wait that long. So it is time to introduce you guys to my full thoughts on Iron Flame. I hope you enjoy it. Let's flip you back to past Mel when I went to go pick up the book. You guys, it is November 7th, and you know what that means. It is Iron Flame Day. I am so excited. I have been anticipating the sequel. Obviously, I love Fourth Wing, so I have a copy coming tomorrow from Amazon, but Amazon's done this thing where they're, like, not sure if they're giving all of the pre-orders the black sprayed edges, and it's tomorrow, and I want it today, so we're about to go to the bookstore, and we're gonna see if they have any copies of it, and if they do, I will just, like, return or resell edition coming from Amazon. Amazon. So let's go. Let's see if they have it. I am so excited. Okay, it's so shiny. We got the goods. Ah! Okay, I was a little afraid that they weren't going to have it. I kept walking around and I was like, where's the book? Where's the book? But they put it like in the middle of the store toward the back. It was kind of weird. But we have the goods. We have the black sprayed edges. I asked the um, cashier. I was like, okay, so how many of these have you had to deal with today? And she was like, pretty much every transaction that I have made. So... The fourth Wayne love is real. I have it. I'm so excited. I can't wait to dive into this tonight. I am finally home from work and starting Iron Flame. I'm so excited. I cannot believe that this is here. Like literally when I finished fourth wing, I knew that it was not going to be that long of a wait for book two, but you know, the waits just feel like forever. And honestly, I am so upset that I did not take the day off work literally, because my like timeline, my discord, my group chats, everything has been blowing up about everyone reading this book today. And I've had to sit in my office and do work with no headphones because I forgot those at home and not read this book. So it is now six o'clock. I have officially started Iron Flame. I am about, I don't know, 15 pages in and already have, let's see how many tabs. One, two, three, four, five, six tabs. And I'm like 20 pages in. So this is going to be interesting. I'm already very into it. The politics are starting to come to the forefront pretty early. We've already had some really good like quotes and character moments. And I'm just, I'm here. I'm living for it. I'm a fourth wing girly. I, I don't, I, I've got nothing for you. I'm, I'm basic. I got nothing for you. But anyway, I'm going to go. I'm sprinting with the patrons tonight in celebration. We're all going to be reading Iron Flame. I cannot wait. So I'm going to go. I'm going to get back to reading. I just, I'm so excited. Okay, so initial first impressions of Iron Flame. I am about 100 pages into this and I'm really, really enjoying it. It is giving me like the feels that I got from Fourth Wing, which is just crack. Like it is so <laughs> addictive and easy to read. The characters feel very authentic. Everyone is kind of at each other's throats. So you can definitely feel the tension off of the end of Fourth Wing. And I am really, really enjoying that so far. I will say that I am noticing a couple of things like repetitive moments where we'll have a sentence or a scene and then two page later, it'll be the same sentence or the same scene. That is a little bit annoying, but honestly, I blame the editors for that because that should have been caught. And I don't think that I would notice it as much if I weren't annotating and like 
looking for things to underline, looking for things to tab. It definitely brings more of that kind of stuff to my attention. I will say that I wish the beginning, like there's a lot of setup happening right now and the structure to how everything has kind of started and progressed is similar to the way that we had in fourth wing. And I think that I was just hoping that the ending of fourth wing was really going to expand the world and really going to expand kind of the politics. And I do think it's expanding the politics, but we are still very closely staying within the school, which sounds like I'm complaining, but I'm not because I like the school. I don't really know what I'm wanting right now. I think that I just need it to, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm rambling because I don't really know what I'm wanting right now. I still really love the school setting. I'm still thoroughly enjoying the school setting, but I also want the world to expand at the same time. So I know I can't have my cake and eat it too, but that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. I'm loving the expansion of politics. I think that that is being really well done. I'm excited to see more of the conversations around the politics and some of the like, societal issues that I know that this is going to bring up and the revolution and kind of how there are two different sides to a war. I think that that's going to be really well done if the hints of that have already been any kind of indication. So thoroughly enjoying my time. I think that right now I feel very similarly to how I did in fourth wing. I'm having a great time. I'll admit I was a little bit nervous because you know, Fourth Wing got so much hype and everyone loved it so much for the most part. I know that there were some outliers that didn't absolutely love it, but I had a great time with it. And so with that much hype, you just worry, is the sequel going to be able to live up to that? And fortunately so far, I think that it is. I definitely was like, okay, if I can make it, I don't know, 100 pages and still have the feelings of the way that I did in Fourth Wing, hopefully that means the rest of the book is going to be a win like a slam dunk so so far thoroughly enjoying this it is like 600 and something pages and i feel like the font is a little bit smaller than book one so the audiobook is quite long i am only 100 pages in it is 8 30 but i really want to get a decent chunk of this done tonight because i'm annotating so i don't want to like listen to the audiobook on the way to work even though i have quite a long drive to work tomorrow so I could get a lot done, but I, I don't want to do that. So I need to stop talking to you guys. I need to go back to reading. Oh, also there have been some what the crap moments in this so far. There was one point where I was literally like, what? So I'm excited for more of those moments. Okay, so we are continuing in Iron Flame and you guys, I have got so many tabs in this already. I am having a great time. There's something about her writing that's just so incredibly addictive. And even when I have problems with it, I'm still having a fantastic time. Like the end of chapter nine, what the holy crap? There's been so many holy crap moments, literally. Holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. I'm trying to find a spot where something else happens. And I like literally wrote oh shit on here and I mean, there's so many moments that I have just like underlined, highlighted. My mouth has been like so much. There's been laughing moments. Like I feel like she just, I don't know, it's crack candy. I am a little bit closer to the halfway point now. And I, like I said, I'm having a fantastic time. There are a few things that I have a few complaints about the, I think we've already talked about the more like repetitive writing that I have noticed. I think the relationship in this is being well done, but also very frustrating all at the same time. Something happens at the end of fourth wing and I get why they are not buddy buddy right now. And I understand Violet's point of view, but the relationship romance side of this so far has not been as prominent as I expected it to be. They do spend a lot of time apart for reasons that are very, very clear, but it can be a little bit frustrating because while I understand her point of view and I understand his point of view, I'm like, please stop long enough to get together to have a conversation so that we can move on from this because it feels very drug out. And that's a little bit annoying. I also feel like Taryn is not my favorite in this so far. I loved, loved, loved Taryn in the first book. And I still like Taryn, don't get me wrong. I'm still loving the dragons. Like I think that they're fantastic. Obviously a great time, but I'm just, I feel like I, there's a few things that I just, I want a little bit more. I feel like he was a little sassier, a little crankier in the first book, and I do miss that, but I still love Andarna. I think she is incredible, 
and I'm looking for a particular tab. Oh, bearish. I'm not gonna tell you anything about him because, or who he is or why he is the way he is because spoilers, but bearish can go to hell. He can just go to hell, go straight to hell. You know how we said fuck Dane in the first book? That was like the thing was fuck Dane. Yeah, go to hell bearish. That's the new motto for this book. I'm sticking with it. Uh, I think the th I do love it when a book can make me hate a character, like hate a character because that means that they're doing the character well. But God, I hate him. He's terrible. He's the worst. He's the literal worst. So anyway, I will check back in later one time further or have some other oh shit moment that we need to talk about. I'll let you know. I really like one of the scenes that we have just had. I'm around page 320 for those of you that want to look this up, but I feel like this scene is such incredibly well done. Not only does it show that Violet is strong and that she has come a long way since the first book, I feel like we don't get as much of her disability in this one, but it's because she has learned how to adapt and accommodate for herself and she has gotten stronger. And I think that that character development is really well done. But this relationship moment on page 323 was just absolutely incredible. I think that Zayden really like opens himself up and I just, I read it and I, I, I waited a minute to talk to you guys about it because like I was in the feels, but I highlighted and I underlined and something happens at the beginning of that. And I was like, yes, I'm so glad that he did not take that from her. I was kind of hoping that a certain character would get lit on fire, but this is okay too. This is good. So. I'm gonna keep reading. I, I, it's crack candy. I'm completely addicted, uh, completely addicted. You guys are balanced very precariously. Okay, so I am now about here-ish into Iron Flame, which is part two about chapter 39. I do think that we've had a really big shift in what the focus of the story is gonna be. The, the very beginning of this is still very much so like in the school and kind of going back to that school setting and learning. They're still in class. And even though they're dealing with the aftermath of fourth wing, they're still in class and doing that kind of school setting thing. And I liked that. I do think that I wanted a little more like either school setting or class-like stuff because they are learning, but I feel like it lost a little bit of its charm from the first book. I don't know. I think I was just hoping for a bit more of a different type of pace, but anyway, I still really, really, really enjoyed it. But now we have kind of gone out of that type of setting in part two, back to where we were similarly at the end of Fourth Wing. I'm trying very hard to be spoiler free. And I think that I'm gonna like that. I don't know, we'll see. I definitely feel like we have learned a lot about the magic and the world in the first part. And I'm curious to see how we expand the world and the politics side of things, because I don't see how in the world we don't have a pretty heavy political shift after what happened at the end of part one. And I love when we have politics that have consequences, like things are moving. We're not just sitting around talking about this propaganda. We're not just sitting around talking about what are we gonna do about this? Like if they're making moves and there's gonna be consequences from those moves. And I think that that is, and that's something that I really enjoy in fantasy. Also like that they are talking about like the propaganda and how the government is able to keep things from civilians and make you believe things regardless of if it's actually true true or not. And I think that discussion is really cool. Something that I love in fantasy. If you guys have read Fireborn, that's another heavy topic in Fireborn. And obviously I absolutely love that series. So I, like I said, am about here. It says I have four-ish hours left of the audiobook. So I'm really hoping that I can finish it tonight. It's 5.15 on Thursday. So we will see if I'm able to finish this tonight. But I'm having a great time so far. I don't know if I'm liking it as much as I did Fourth Wing, but I'm still having a fantastic time. I'm highlighting, I'm tabbing, like these are my tabs so far. I think they look really good and I can't wait to see it when it's done.
dog that says, I hate that stupid book. Stop reading it and pay attention to me. Why does she keep ripping my heart out? Liam! I mean, like, I'm loving this moment, but it hurts. So we've already had this come up once, but I will say that I am not a huge fan of the other woman trope. I never have been. Like, it has its purposes and it can be used in a very useful way to, like, improve banter and move the plot forward. But I just feel like in this one, it's not going to be super necessary because... We already know Zayden and Violet are in-game, so like why do we introduce the other woman 400 pages into book two? So we'll see how that ends up going, but right now, not a huge fan. I have just gotten to the end of chapter 42, and I'm trying to figure out like, was that entire scene, was its main purpose to get the other woman in a place where she could become a bigger deal? Because if that's the case, that's dumb, and I don't like it. I hope that there's more of a point to it than that. But if not, that's done. Okay, so I am about, I don't know, less than a quarter um, from finishing this. And we've had a few more relationship moments between Zayden and Violet, which I appreciate because I actually feel like this book has less romance in it than the first one did, which normally would not be a complaint for me. But I do feel like I'm missing a little something from their relationship because we're just kind of whining at each other rather than having real discussions and the banter and mostly I'm just missing the banter honestly because that's my favorite part of a romance and we don't really have as much banter as I want or expected but anyway that's not the point that's not where I'm going with this we have gotten several moments where she's trying to have them have real conversations and I quite liked the first couple of times where they're really like honing down learning more about each other learning how each other feels and why they feel that way and kind of working on their issues because they definitely both have issues however I feel like we're beating a dead horse at this point. They've had this conversation. They seem to have worked through it. Why does this keep coming up over and over and over again? Let's just kind of move on because there's bigger problems at hand than insecurities, jealousy, and the fact that he has secrets. Like we, we've talked about this 900 times by now. So let's just move on. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little frustrated by that because their relationship could be something really good and I think that there's the potential for that. But I want the banter back. I want, I don't know, like the hate to love is fine, but I just, I liked their snipes and kind of that part of the relationship because it's just fun. So I do miss that and I'm hoping that we get a little bit more of that soon because we have spent 465 pages of a very similar spot in their relationship and I'm kind of over it. It's gotten quite a bit darker in here because it's getting much later at night but um I just finished chapter 54 and all I have to say is oh shit that's not good. That's not good. That's not good at all. I mean it had to happen but that's not good. As you can tell, I look a little bit more awake today than I probably did last night, and I am a little more fresh <laughs> than I was yesterday. I did decide not to finish Iron Flame last night, mostly because I have heard that the ending is kind of wild and a little bit confusing, and so I wanted to have my full mental capacity there to kind of get through the ending of this thing, and I wanted to film my reaction for you guys of me, like, reading the very end of the book, so... That's what I'm about to do. I'm going to sit down. I'm hoping I can get it finished before David gets here. We are leaving today to go to Kentucky and there's no way that I'm going on a trip without having finished this book. So wish me luck. We're going to sit down, get to some reading. Okay, so I am now within kind of the very end of getting this book finished. And so far, I'm still really enjoying it. And right now, we're kind of at that point where things you can tell are about to start to hit the fan. Like the ending is revving up. There are more political maneuvers happening that I'm really liking. However, I do think that the scope that I was hoping for and the expansion of the world and stuff that I really wanted out of the second part has not been my favorite. The beginning of the second part has been a little bit 
on the boring side, it's not that things aren't happening, but I feel like we're doing a lot of talking and walking rather than actually doing things. And so I do miss the banter and I miss the politics and I miss the magic and all of that stuff. And I'm hoping that we get a little more of that here pretty soon. But I've heard that the ending is absolutely wild. So I'm buckling up, hoping that I love it. And I, yeah, I'm not sure that I'm ready, but we're gonna do this, let's do this. officially finished Iron Flame. This is going to be pretty much my knee-jerk reactions to this because I literally closed the book five minutes ago. So I just finished it. I reserve the right to process and develop my opinions. Just full disclosure because these are just like gut reactions and that ending it was well done. I, <laughs> ooh, okay, so it was really fast paced. I was on the edge of my seat flipping through the pages so quick, so easy to read. My watch is literally blowing up because I told everybody that I just finished it. But like, whew, okay, okay. So, um, I guess let's just, I'm just going to start with like my overall thoughts and we'll circle back to the ending and maybe I'll have a coherent thought by the time I get to it. And I'm going to put this down because it's really shiny and messing with my white balance. But this book as a whole, I really, really enjoyed. I still had a lot of fun with this and I think that this is a story that I am going to read every single one of the books of and they're just like crack candy. They're so easy to read and I like the story that we have. I think that Rebecca Yaris does a good job telling this story. Yes, I have some complaints, but most of those complaints are coming from the fact that I am an epic fantasy reader. So I have complaints both from the fantasy romance side and from the epic side. And I think that you can tell that this is not her primary genre. However, I do think she does a pretty good job with it. And they are just completely addicting. With that being said, I do think that the pacing in this struggled quite a bit. We were kind of up and down, up and down. I did definitely see a lot of repetitiveness in the structure of the story, which annoyed me a little bit. I'm really hoping that book three is not more of the same. They can't go back to school and be back in school for part of the story and then be not in school for part of the story. It's just not going to work if we keep on the same formula over and over and over again. I do think that I loved the character development of Violet. I think that she is a really good main 
character and I like being in her head. I personally don't want Zayden's point of view. I don't feel like I need his point of view. I like being in her head and I like that we have told the majority of both stories that way. So I'm probably in the minority that I don't need his point of view per se. I like her character development and her arc. I do wish we had had more friendship in this. I think that that was missing in this story and I wanted just more moments and I think that some things probably could have been sacrificed for the sake of more moments. Moments with her mother, moments with her sister, her brother, with Rai, with Zayden. There was just not as many moments as I wanted there to be. Moments with the dragons. Now the dragons were definitely more prominent in the second half of this, which I really enjoyed. I loved the lore and everything that we got in the second half of this on the dragons. I thought that, that was really cool and I'm excited to see how that develops and what happened to get us where we are in the lore of the dragons here because they are very secretive and they're not going to tell you everything and I like that we are getting these moments with the dragons but I do wish that we had had a little more banter and sniping between her and Taryn and Sigal and Zayden. I liked that in the first book quite a lot. I think that leads me to the romance side of things. The romance in this was very much so backseat. I agree with most people that said Fourth Wing felt like a fantasy romance. It was romance first, fantasy second, at least for the majority of the book, even though we're pretty much just focused on Violet. It, it is their story. Whereas in this one, it felt much more like a fantasy with a little bit of romance, but it definitely is a fantasy. Now, on the one hand, that does not bother me because I'm not a huge fan of lots of sex scenes and third act breakups and yada, 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 the complaining and the relationship moment stuff. Like, it's not my favorite always. However, when it's well done, I can thoroughly enjoy it. And I think I actually missed that a little bit in this book. I went in expecting a fantasy romance and we got a lot of back and forth, a lot of griping at one another. And it was pretty much the entire book until we got toward the very end. I would say probably the last third to the last quarter when they actually started having real conversations. He got to the root of why he felt the way that she did. She got to say why she felt the way that she did and their relationship did start to develop a lot more, but it took way too long for us to get there for this to be a fantasy romance. I did appreciate the less sex scenes. I think that sex scenes are important in a fantasy romance to develop the relationship, but I don't need them to be every five pages. So that part I did appreciate. As far as the ending goes, in a lot of ways, I'm probably, I'm just going to say it, I think I'm going to be in the minority on the ending. A lot of people have seemed unhappy with it from what I have seen around so far. And I'm not sure that I am. I reserve the right to change my mind after I've thought about it for a little while, but my gut reaction was, that makes sense. Do I like it? No. Do I like the implications that I think that it is going to have for the impact of the rest of the story? No. But do I see the justification for it and I see where she's going with that? Yeah, I kind of do. And I think it's very similar to somebody, y'all are going to come for me. I can't believe I'm about to say this on the internet, but Game of Thrones. People hated that ending so much because of a certain thing that happened. And I get it, but at the same time, it made sense. It made sense for the character arc. And that's kind of how I feel right now. But again, I haven't really had time to like fully dive into it and develop my thoughts. And once I talk about it a little bit and kind of delve deeper into the discussion of the way that it ended, I may feel differently. So I do just kind of want to, my gut reaction is, okay, I see it but I don't like the implications for it and I'm not 100% sure about how I feel about it yet. So I, that, that's kind of where I'm at right now. The ending is going to be either shocking or shocking unsurprising for a lot of people. I think it's going to be very, very divisive. I know some people that have absolutely hated it and I know some people that just don't love it, but they're kind of like me. I don't love it, I don't, but it's okay. I liked the world building and like I said, the dragon lore that we got at the end of this. The pacing at the end is breakneck speed. I do think that the battle scenes and kind of those rushed action sequences are where you can tell that Rebecca Yaris is not a fantasy writer because it gets a little convoluted and a little harder to follow the faster the pacing gets. But at the same time, I hope that that's something that she can learn and improve upon and it's not bad. You can just tell that it's not like Sanderson, you know? 
So anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I think with my complaints on this, I am going to have to give it a four star, but I still really enjoyed it. I will still definitely be reading the third book in the series. I'm excited for the third book in the series and excited to see what she can do with the reveal at the end of book two. It could go a lot of different ways. She could go hardcore romance writer and this could be a problem and frustrating or she could lean into the fantasy side of things and it could be an interesting development. I'm not really sure, but I'm excited to find out. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that that's all of my thoughts. I've been talking for seven and a half minutes, so I probably do need to stop talking about this book. But yeah, four stars. I really think that the tabs turned out, let's see if you can see them. The tabs turned out really, really well. If you're curious what my tabbing system was, I used dark orange for Zayden, red for dragons, gray for moments, dark purple for violet, yellow for world building, and like this tan color for politics. So those were my my tabs for this. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I can't believe I'm done. And now we have to wait goodness knows how long until the third book in the series. But I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to think about that. I'm just going to have a book hangover and I don't know what I'm going to read next because how do you follow up Regardless of whether or not you liked the ending, how do you follow that up? Anyway, uh, yeah, I think that that's everything. Let me know down in the comments if you've read Iron Flame yet or if you were just here to hear my thoughts. I tried really hard to keep this as spoiler free as possible. So fingers crossed that I was semi successful at that because I don't want to spoil any major moments for anyone, but I did want to give you my unfiltered thoughts. If you have read Iron Flame, let me know kind of your general impressions. What did you think about it down in the comments? If you don't really have an opinion either way, you just want to let me know that you were here. Obviously, leave me a... I think a flame emoji. Let's be unexpected. Let's not use a dragon. Let's use a flame emoji for this. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for watching this video. It was a ton of fun to film. I enjoyed my time immensely. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are all in the description box down below. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!